Hello everyone, my name's Dave Howell and I've been asked here to 532 Studios today by the wonderful people at 532 to read a story in aid of the Wood Street Mission based in Salford who do wonderful things for families around the Greater Manchester area. And today, me and Ratty are going to be reading The Fast Santa by Jake Bowley from Year 6, St James C of E Primary School. Once upon a cold Christmas night, Santa was sat in his office, watching over his elves. His elves were working so hard, since in half an hour, Santa would set off in his sleigh. Santa was very excited for his sleigh ride, since he always has to wait a year just to see the happiness in all the children's faces. He could barely contain his excitement as he waited to start his journey. As Santa walked excitedly to his sleigh, he was shocked to find an evil elf waiting for him. The mischievous elf reached behind his back and pulled out a Netomatic 2000, a latest model of a gadget to capture someone. He shot it at Santa and the net flew over Santa and swooped him up. The evil elf threw Santa in the sleigh, then quickly changed into Santa's suit and started to do something the Grinch couldn't. Steal Christmas! After finally stealing all the Christmas trees, fairy lights and mince pies, the elf landed on his last house right in Gorton. He climbed up onto the roof and into the chimney. When he was in the house, he was met by a child who had pyjamas which were too small for him and stained. It was clear to see his family didn't have much money. The boy started talking, saying things like, I love Christmas because I asked Santa for a new pair of pyjamas and it also helps families to spend time together. The boy kept on talking and talking about why Christmas meant so much to him. When the elf tried to speak, he couldn't fit a word in. After hearing all the joyous things the boy had to say, it completely changed the elves point of view towards Christmas. Time was ticking on and so the elf didn't have long to release Santa and save Christmas. The elf and Santa worked together to save Christmas. Just in the nick of time they finished the last house. Santa was so impressed that he asked the elf to come and work for him. They became the best of friends. The end. Well, thank you, Jake Bowley from Year 6. What a beautiful story. And it certainly makes me think of being happier and spreading more joy myself at Christmas because I can be a bit of a Grinch sometimes. Hope you all have a fantastic Christmas. And the details, if you'd like to make a donation to Wood Street Mission, are at the top of the screen. Happy Christmas, everyone. Goodbye. Hello, my name's Shirley. Uh, this is Bernard the Dog. And I think we both think Christmas is just a really magical time. And however you spend it with it, family, whether it's virtual or in the same space, I think it's just a really nice time to have some closeness with those around you who you love. Um, we are raising money for Wood Street Mission, which is for children and families on a low income in Manchester. And we know that times are hard, but if anyone does have any money they could spare, please do donate it at 532.com forward slash right Christmas. Um, it will be on the screen as well. Rumpus Trumpus by Adam Ward. Oliver was a nice little boy. He did well in school. He liked playing football and playing the guitar. But there was one thing that Oliver loved more than anything else. Christmas. Every year, Oliver couldn't wait for Christmas. The food, the presents, staying in his pyjamas until midday, watching films with his gran. Well, 
until she fell asleep. But Oliver's favourite part of Christmas was getting to see his friends. They would wrap up warm, show each other their toys, swap sweets and play in the snow until the street lights came on. But for the first time since Oliver could remember, he wasn't allowed to see his friends. Oliver missed his friends. Playing out was his favourite thing to do. He wasn't allowed to see Ivy or Theo or Jude and couldn't see Poppy or Ezra or his best friend Mahmood. Oliver was sad and he didn't know what to do. Yes, he had his gran and his big brother too. But not seeing his friends made him feel blue. So Oliver decided there's something he must do. One night before bed, Oliver scrunched his eyes up tight and crossed his fingers and toes and wished with all his might. I want Christmas. I want this Christmas to be just like before. Playing out with my friends with the whole of Manchester to explore. Sharing toys and sweets and everything I like with me and Mahmood on a brand new bikes. Oliver pondered for a moment, thinking about the wish he was making. But really, those aren't the things that are important to me. What's really important to me are my friends, you see. I would give up all of my presents and sweets and even naps if you could find a way this Christmas to bring my friends back. Oliver opened his eyes and crossed his toes and fingers and looked out of the window. Nothing seemed to be any different. So he decided to go to bed. Oliver awoke with a thud. He thought his football must have fallen off his shelf and landed on him. But when he opened his eyes, it wasn't a football at all. Standing at the bottom of Oliver's bed was a small creature, no bigger than a chihuahua, standing and staring straight back at him. It had a green furry body with red and white trousers and a pair of shiny black boots with bells on. Its face had two large cartoonish eyes, a bright red nose like a tomato and a big smiling face. Oi, Bozo! It spoke. Uh, are, are you talking to me? Oliver nervously replied. Do you see any other bozos around here? Oliver looked around the room to be sure, before immediately shaking his head. You're in luck. I'm here to save your Christmas, the creature exclaimed. Oliver was perplexed. This creature, though festively coloured, did not seem anything like Father Christmas, an elf or even a reindeer. If anything, the creature's quite a runt indeed. Oliver thought to himself, how is this thing going to help save my Christmas? I know what you're thinking, said the creature. You're thinking, how is this thing going to save my Christmas? Oliver did not respond. He just kept staring at the creature in confused amazement. Well, let me tell you, the creature continued. After Father Christmas, the head elf, the senior management elves, the superior elves, the assistant supervisor elves, the elves who work part-time and weekends, and the elves doing their apprenticeships. I'm the next in line to save Christmas! The creature stood with arms out wide, smiling, waiting for a round of applause from Oliver. Didn't go. Why couldn't Father Christmas or any of the elves come to save my Christmas? Oliver asked. Don't you realise how busy they are at this time of the year? The creature replied. So instead, they sent the next best thing. Rumpus, trumpus! Oliver burst out laughing. What's so funny? The creature said. Is that your name? Oliver inquired. Yes, it is, and it isn't funny. The creature said, now somewhat disheartened. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to hurt your feelings, but I've never heard a name like that before. Rumpus sat on the edge of the bed, sulking, facing away from Oliver. No one ever wants me to save Christmas, Rumpus said. Everyone thinks I'm a joke. Oliver sat for a moment and began to feel ever so sorry for the creature. He was only trying to help after all, and this was the first time one of Oliver's wishes had actually come true. 
You're not a joke, Rumpus. And I believe you can save my Christmas. As quick as a flash, Rumpus jumped back around to face Oliver. Well, let's go then. Rumpus grabbed hold of Oliver's sleeve and the pair of them flew out of the window into the night. Oliver had no idea where they were going, but he was excited all the same. Rumpus and Oliver flew higher and higher into the night sky, with Oliver's house getting smaller and smaller. So, how are we going to save your Christmas, Oliver? asked Rumpus. Well, I've been missing my friends an awful lot, Oliver replied. Say no more, said Rumpus, and before Oliver had a chance to think, both he and Rumpus were sitting in what looked like a living room, but in complete darkness. Where are we? Rumpus said. I don't know. You're the one who brought us here, Oliver responded. I'll try and find a light switch. Upon finding the light switch and illuminating the room, Oliver knew exactly where they were. They were in Poppy's living room in the middle of the night, with everyone in the house fast asleep. We're in Poppy's house. Fantastic, Rumpus replied. It's not fantastic at all. I'm not allowed to be here. It's against the law. Against the law? You never said that. Well, I thought you knew. Everyone knows. Well, I didn't. We need to get out of here now. Rumpus jumped across the room, grabbing Oliver in the process and there, we immediately transported somewhere else. Once again, they were in darkness. Once again, it was up to Oliver to find the light switch. Where are we now? asked Rumpus. Oh no, now we're in Ezra's kitchen. Why are you taking me to all these places? I don't choose where we go, I can only transport us to places you what to go? Well, what good is it going to my friends' houses when they're all asleep? I hope they don't have an alarm system. I wouldn't do well in jail, Rumpus responded. How is this supposed to save my Christmas, Rumpus? Oliver animatedly asked in whispered tones so as not to wake Ezra or any of his family up. Oh, I'm not so sure. I'm sorry, Oliver. I don't really know how Christmas magic works. The face of Rumpus, which up until this point had optimistically wide-eyed with a big enthusiastic grin, had turned into a gigantic frown. To make matters worse, Oliver could see his cartoonish large eyes were beginning to fill up with tears. I'm so sorry, Rumpus. I know you're only trying to help, but this isn't working. I want to see my friends, but I want all of us to be safe too. At that exact moment, the nose of Rumpus Trumpus lit up bright red, just like Rudolph. I have a fantastic idea, he said. Well, what is it, Rumpus? Whoa! Before Oliver could finish, Rumpus had already transported the both of them to the next venue they would be visiting that evening. Oliver did not need a light switch to know where he was. Both Oliver and Rumpus Trumpus were standing in Mahmood's bedroom. Oliver felt different in Mahmood's bedroom. Different to how he'd felt in Ezra's kitchen or Poppy's living room. Firstly, each step he took around the bedroom felt much bouncier than he'd felt in the previous rooms. Mahmood's bedroom seemed to have an unusual festive glow. And the smile on the face of Rumpus was the biggest Oliver had seen. It was then that Oliver realised Rumpus had placed him in some kind of large ball. Almost like a sorbing ball, but with a warm, Christmassy glow. Do you feel safer now? Rumpus inquired. The pair of them laughed. It was at that moment Mahmood woke up. Seeing both Rumpus, Trumpus and Oliver in the Christmas ball gave Mahmood such a fright he let out a scream. <gasps> Mahmood, it's me! Oliver exclaimed. Oliver, what are you doing here? It's against the law. Sorry, that's my fault, Rumpus said. 
Mahmood once again screamed upon seeing the creature. What's that? Mahmood asked. That's Rumpus. He's here to help save my Christmas. What are you wearing? It's a Christmas orb to keep the pair of you safe while you're in the same room, said Rumpus. Oh, okay. That makes sense, I think. It's good to see you, Oliver. Oliver and Mamu talked deep into the night, all about the things that they'd done since they'd last seen each other, the things they'd missed doing, and what plans they had for over Christmas. Rumpus joined in with that too. They played games and sang songs as best they could with Oliver in the Christmas orb, until both of them got very sleepy. I think it's time the two of you got to bed, said Rumpus. I think you're right. My gran will be waking up soon, Oliver said. Mahmood and Oliver said their goodbyes, and in the blink of an eye, Oliver was out of Mahmood's bedroom, out of the Christmas orb, and back safe and sound in his own bed. Oliver laid snuggled up in his duvet, contented after having seen his best friend for the first time in what felt like forever. And it was all thanks to his strange new friend, Rumpus Trumpus. Rumpus? I just wanted to say thank you. I know it was only one evening, but that really did make my Christmas. Think nothing of it, Oliver, replied Rumpus, as he curled up at the bottom of Oliver's bed. The pair of them closed their eyes and fell asleep. The next morning, Oliver woke up with a spring in his step, but there was no sign of Rumpus anywhere. He looked under his bed, in the wardrobe, in his drawers and even in the bin. Rumpus was gone. It was as though he'd never existed at all. Was it all a dream? But it couldn't have been. It, it felt so real. Just then, there was a knock at Oliver's bedroom door. Rumpus, is that you? Rumpus, is that what you're calling me now? It was Oliver's gran. <gasps> Sorry, gran, I thought you were someone else. Well, never mind that. Merry Christmas, sweetheart. Come and join me and your brother downstairs. I think Father Christmas might have been. Oliver put on his dressing gown and walked downstairs to the living room to see a pile of wonderful presents which his older brother had already started on. Gran sipped a cup of tea and opened up a packet of chocolate digestives while the boys got stuck into their gifts. Oliver had been spoilt this year. A box of chocolates from a mood, fresh cookies baked by Poppy, and a board game from Ezra that involved getting a cream pie in your face. He had hoped to play that with his older brother later. Oh, and a warm sweater and socks from Gran. Oliver and his brother were just getting comfortable with blankets and hot chocolates, ready to watch a film when Gran said, Oh, Oliver, there's another present for you. It was just behind the tree wondered what it could be and who it could be from. He examined the tag. It read, I hope this helps save your Christmas. Your friend, R.T. He unwrapped the gift and he couldn't believe his eyes. It was the Christmas orb from last night with another note inside. I have left one of these under the tree for Mahmood, Ezra, Poppy and all your friends. It might not be the same as last Christmas or the one before, but at least now you can play out. Oliver was overjoyed. Last night hadn't been a dream at all. It had been real and most importantly of all, Rumpus had done exactly what he said he would do. He had saved Oliver's Christmas and Oliver couldn't be happier. <laughs>